This video is about a few of the electronic items that were used to, to control effects in a series called Mission 2110. Now, this chap here is Caleb, and he was the star of the show. He kind of was trying to save the planet from the roboid killer robots. And what he's holding in his hand is a bio rod. And here are some more bio rods in the prop department. And they consisted of a two metal end caps with a plastic core, and then in the middle was a plastic tube filled with a bubble gel, and then a fluorescent core up the middle. And they kind of approached me a bit late in the day um, about putting electronics into these. I, I prefer it when people approach me right at the beginning and we can design things together to allow for battery space. So ended up with these with um, quite a short deadline to produce them, and also a space roughly this size to actually put the electronics in to make these light up. And the only thing I could really think of to do that was a little circuit board like this with a lithium battery in the back because it wasn't possible to provide an external power source to these because as part of the game they're grabbed from robots and from like parts of the set and they're used as a sort of point scoring device. So here's what I did. I made a small circuit board that fitted in the space with four LEDs. I was going to include a resistor, but decided in the end that the voltage of the blue LEDs was close to the cell anyway. And it takes a lithium cell, a surface mount holder, and when you stick a cell into the back, a 2032, it provides a bright source of blue light for quite a modest length of time. It actually runs for... Um, well, it, initially it starts off very bright, but it tails away gradually over time. But you, you can come back to this a week later and it's still lit. But for production use, it had to be, you know, basically just before they were out to film, they'd stick the batteries in, clip the props together, and, and then they'd go. So um, it did the job pretty well, actually. Um, all they required was a large quantity of cells and a, a large quantity of these too. The bio rods were so popular that they had to have a wee word with the uh, crew about the fact that so many were going missing during the production. Mm, naughty. Another thing on that show was the requirement for small uh, electronic modules where the, the, the whole series was filmed on a ship, a well, container ship. It was actually a group of container ships that were temporarily parked during a recession when it wasn't really viable to use them so they just parked them up in a um, loch in Scotland. And to get some illumination into various props, it wasn't very easy to run wiring to a lot of locations in the ship. Uh, so, And we certainly couldn't make holes in the walls because they were, well, made of steel and we weren't allowed to make holes in them. So I designed some panels that stuck to the wall magnetically. And in the back of these panels was a battery pack and one of these modules. And this module takes a PIC microcontroller, a PIC PIC 16F627A, and basically speaking, all it is is a polarity protection diode and then a resistor on every single output, and big pads, so that you can just basically stick this in the back of a prop, it, mount the LEDs in the prop, one common wire goes to all the LEDs, and then each LED tacks back to this unit and just splodges onto this. I call that a splat, because that's pretty much how it went in, you just splatted it into a prop. And it was very good. It, it did various effects, um, Night Rider effects. It did the sort of random sort of control panel effects, and it just it could be programmed whatever was required. And I have to say, these were so useful. I ended up getting a batch properly manufactured because um, they just they came in. They were just a very useful device, very compact and very simple and rugged. The other thing I made for that series was um, the game controllers. Now, there were a few games in the show that um, involved challenges that you had to hit targets or buttons and things like that. So this was uh, another self-controlled game module that had uh, eight outputs. It's got a microcontroller, a ULN2803 Darlington driver, and then eight outputs with a common, and then four inputs with a common. Um, I've got a wire attached to this because this was used for testing the games before they got, it went into the final units. And uh, the inputs are all uh, filtered with the little capacitor and resistor networks, and uh, they had uh, the pull-up resistor and array. There was also an audio output via a MOSFET, and it was very simple, it just basically drove a square wave output, and that was only to provide low-level game interaction to the players, because 
you don't really want to have too much volume uh, when you're filming because laterally in production they'll dub on sound effects over that in the end but it gave the option that if they required they could have some feedback for the game it was a very useful module actually it was very very handy it's uh, come in useful for other props since so um yeah that was a that was an interesting show a lot of custom electronics built for that um, it was a, a fantastic location they had for the show as well. But yeah, it's all very interesting. It was good, quite an enjoyable job. <laughs>